Good. Having a good DrupalCon? Fantastic. We've got a few minutes, a couple of minutes before this starts. So we'll let some people come in and then we'll, we'll get rolling. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm good. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, I appreciate it. Yeah, if there are any open seats next to the walls, please try to slide down so people can can uh, sit in the back. Or just hang out on the floor, whatever. Whatever works. Let's get rolling. So if you're here, you're here obviously for the media module. And uh, the title of the talk is Media Module and Core and Setting Up a Drupal 8 Media Library. So I'll introduce myself. My name is Shane Jeffers. And I am the director of front end development at the Brick Factory. And we are a Washington, DC based digital agency uh, with that does digital campaigns for advocacy groups, stuff like that. Um, and you can see that's my Twitter and the company's Twitter, so you guys can follow me there or the company as well in my email. You can't hear this, so I'm going to skip it. Sadly, sadly, I know, that's my son and the video is hilarious. But, uh, the audio only comes out of the little projector and, <laughs> and it doesn't quite do it justice. So, uh, but actually if you go to this, the slides here, um, I believe that the video should work. So if you can play it later on your device, it's, it's funny. Um, yeah, so here are the slides, shanejeffers.com forward slash DrupalCon dash 2018. Should be able to access that there. All right, got to move on? Cool. All right, so here's what we're going to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about life before media. I'm going to do a little bit of a history of where we're coming from before Drupal, uh, before media was in core. Uh, we're going to talk about the media initiative briefly. We're going to talk about the inclusion of media in core. Uh, and some contrib modules that you can use to extend what core gives you currently. Uh, we're going to talk about cropping some images, and then we're going to also talk about organizing media with entity browser widgets. All right, so life before media. Just read this. <laughs> just read this and see if it, you know it's something that you've seen before. Um, I, I still, I have a, a coworker. I don't know if he's here right now, but he doesn't want to use the media module and he's okay with uploading 500 images um, and keeping them all in the file system. Uh, but obviously clients are like, what? That doesn't make sense. And in most CMSs, this is not how it's done. Um, so we're, <laughs> we're gonna move on. And uh, let me jump and show you basically what you get out of the box. So this is a Drupal 8.5 install. 
Um, we're going to go basically add a page here. Super fancy. And I have an image field. Woo! It's looking good already. All right, there's one of my son. There, there's going to be a theme with my son here on this because he's uh, 20 months old, and that's pretty much my life other than Drupal. Um, so, save. Okay, so that was pretty amazing, right? Uh, we have a standard image field. One thing that did get added to the core uh, image field type in in core is the ability to upload multiple images. The formatter actually looks the same on the front end, but there's a little tiny little text underneath it saying, you know, you can upload uh, an unlimited number. Um, so you can do that, and that's new in core. Uh, but that's basically it. That's what you get <laughs> out of the box, even in 8.5. So let's talk about why that was awful. Uh, it's not reusable. Remember Jim and the client? Uh, you can't add metadata to it. The only thing you can really do is add alt tags, text. And there's no support for remote video, YouTube, Instagram, any, anything, anything like that. Um, and I think this is intentional. It was an intentionally simple for core. So what do we do about it? We got we to gotta fix it. Uh, so a bunch of smart Drupal guys, I'm sure, maybe some of them are even in this talk, got together. And, and by guys, I didn't mean males. I meant peeps. Um, so yeah, so they got together and realized, hey, how can we make this better? H how do we make this um, something that the client is going to want to, is going to enjoy using and it's intuitive? So they came up with a set of goals and kind of what we just talked about in the last slide, it's reusable media. Being able to upload an image one time and access that image from anywhere within the system. Uh, adding fields and metadata, just like you would a content type. Uh, maybe that's taxonomy, maybe that's referencing another node, whatever that is, I want the ability to be able to add extra metadata to my media items. Uh, o embed support, which is basically um, remote media. So it's a, it's a protocol that will, you basically, you can put in a URL to let's say YouTube or Instagram, and it passes you back a JSON object where then you, know, you have access to the HTML, to the username, to all, all of this great information that then we can use to embed directly uh, into, into the Drupal site. Uh, WYSIWYG embedding. We want to be able to take those media items that we uploaded and put them into our WYSIWYG. And another goal, I think this one is further in the future, or actually scheduled for 8.6, I think but uh, is a full featured media library. So, contrib to the rescue, right? So I don't know if any of you guys have heard of it, but it, Media Entity, which is um, basically the successor to the media module in Drupal 7, um, it was written to basically, media module was very heavy the in Drupal 7, it, it, it forced you into a lot of things that you maybe you didn't want. Um, so what Media Entity did in Drupal 8 was give you kind of some of that control back. Um, it makes, it makes uh, fieldable entities, so you can create them just like content types, add metadata there. Um, so that's really cool. And they are basically the equivalent of content types. So it's just like a regular entity in Drupal, uh, a media type, is what we call a media item or a node, per se. Um, and the important part here is that media types make use of source plugins. So that is how Drupal defines how the data is stored. So you could have an Instagram um, media type, for example, and the source plugin itself says, go, go out to Instagram, get that information back, but put the title here in this field, put the image in this field. So it's, it, it dictates how that data is stored. So that's going to be different depending upon the media type. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship. Um, for example, you're going to get different data back from YouTube that you're going to get back from Instagram. So 
the source plugins are really neat. So the fact that almost everything that media entity can trim module did aligned very well with, with the media initiative goals, it just made sense to port that into core. So they didn't do a direct port, I don't believe, but um, they made some API changes and they ported the main core module, uh, I'm sorry, the main core API into Drupal core. So in core, it was renamed to media. So it's no longer media entity. Um, and there is an upgrade path from media entity contrib, which was basically 8.3 and below. Um, there was, there's an upgrade path that you can check out on uh, drupal.org and yeah. Most provider modules, so provider modules like Instagram, uh, video embed field, things like that, uh, media entity Twitter, those are provider modules and they were originally, um, that's the word I'm looking for, integrated with the contrib module. So they now, most of them all, have a secondary branch that you can use, uh, like a 2x branch that you can use to uh, work with the media module in core. So when you're downloading these and testing these, you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to uh, which version that you're downloading because it, it could be incompatible if you grab the wrong one. The other thing is the fact that there's an upgrade path in place means uh, at this point, it's recommended that you move away from media entity contrib uh, because it's going to go bye-bye <laughs> relatively soon. All right, demo time. You guys got your popcorn? <laughs> All right, so the requirements for this demo, uh, there are a few other ones, but I just wanted to touch on some of the highlights. Uh, Drupal 8.4 plus, uh, you have entity browser, Entity Embed, Media Entity Browser, Drop Zone JS, Image Crop Widget, the Video Embed field, and the Media Entity Twitter. All right, I'm actually gonna skip out here. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is, I showed you what you get out of the box without enabling Media Entity, you have image fields just like a standard Drupal site. So we're gonna jump in and enable the media module. <laughs> Which does not have a space. All right. I tell you no lie, like my demo just like blew up right before this, so I'm, you know, I'm saying a prayer. <laughs> All right, so all right, so now what we're gonna do is go into the content type and we're gonna add a media field, which is basically an entity reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my image field here, because we don't need that any longer. So I'm gonna go in and select a new field. I'm gonna choose media, call it media. There's also a note here, which is, is good to note, below where I'm selecting the field. It tells you that media is what you should use to reference these other types. So as you can see in this dropdown, there's an image reference too, but that's a, that's a reference to the, the standard image field, so you don't, wanna, you don't wanna use that. So it's good to check that out. We're going to set an unlimited, un, woo, an unlimited number of values so we can upload multiple images. And we're going to select the media type. So these are the media types that come default with, with Drupal 8 uh, it, and the media module if it's enabled. Um, so you've got audio, file, image, video. Just keep in mind that these are all local. So we're going to save. All right, so now let's go back to our page that we created, super fancy. We're gonna scroll down and we get this media area. So this is not very helpful. 
at the moment, um, it tells me, okay, I have to go to a media ad page to create this content. So I click there. I'm gonna upload. I'm gonna upload an image, a different one. Let's do this one. There we go. All right, so there he is with his bow tie. <laughs> All right, so, so what that actually did was we created the media item, the entity in the back end, but it's not referenced to anything. It's not on a node. It's not, that's just the media display that we saw. Uh, so I'm going to edit my node now since I want to add it to my node. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to type the name of it, of the media item, and then I'm going to save and view it. So there we go. So now I have it attached to my node. It's a reusable media item that is totally separate from the node. The node is just referencing it. So although that works, it's not fantastic at all. Um, and it's not something that we would really want to put in front of a client. So uh, I want to introduce the Entity Browser module, which is basically an, inter an interface to select and upload and edit your ent entities. Um, it can be used in multiple places. It can be used as uh, an entity reference widget. So if you had a node with a entity reference field on it, you could use this interface to select that widget instead of just searching like the autocomplete like, like we just did. Um, it also aids embedding entities into the WYSIWYG. So the same interface that you get to do the node references, you can do to select an image and embed it directly into the WYSIWYG. This is the kind of wireframe version of what ent the entity browser module gives you. Uh, in this case, it's kind of framed as a modal um, and you have two tabs here. You have view and upload. Those are widget plugins. So obviously the view tab is going to give you access to all of the current uh, items that are uploaded and the upload tab will give you the ability to upload. Uh, the items below that are the actual entities themselves. In this case, they look like images in the wireframe, but they could be anything, tweets, stuff like that. Um, and then the tray at the bottom kind of shows what's selected and it allows you to actually do the selection. So make the, that's like the submit button. Um, although if you were to just enable Entity Browser by itself, the UI is not great. Um, so there's a contrib module out there called Media Entity Browser, which basically puts a paint of coat, a coat of paint on it. Um, so it makes it look better, gives a little bit of JavaScript interaction. Um, instead of having a checkbox, you know, it's actually like a thumbnail that you can click on that has a check mark. So it's, uh, it's nice. There are, there are also other alternatives to Media Entity Browser, a few of them being File Entity Browser, Content Browser, and Entity Browser Enhanced. The only thing to double check is that those three modules have support for the core version. Um, I, I did not get to look at that, but those those are alternatives that we're working with Media Entity Contrib, so I'm sure that they, if they haven't ported, they will. Okay, so extending Entity Browser, we can add some things like Drop Zone JS. We can add um, editing items on upload and using inline Entity Form. So I'm going to jump back in and show that. All right, let me just, just, there we go. So the first thing we're going to do here uh, is enable the module. That's definitely step number one. So we've got Entity Browser. I'm going to go ahead and enable these, the Media Entity Browser, the Entity Browser, also the IEF integration. 
and the inline entity form module. We're going to go ahead and install those. Okay, so now we basically want to change the widget that's on our reference field for the media item that we just created. So we're going to go under content types, basic page, and we're going to manage the form display, scroll down to our media item or media field that we just added, uh, and right now it's currently set to autocomplete. So when you click there, you get a few options. Um, we're going to choose entity browser. So there's some options here and you can kind of play with them for the sake of time. I'm not going to go through each one of these, but we're going to use the rendered entity display plugin and uh, the view mode here, which is cool because when you're actually, uh, when the items render in the entity browser itself in the interface, you can dictate what view mode is displayed. So that's nice. Man, you guys are quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good. All right. So we've got that enabled. Let's jump back in and see what that looks like when we edit the node. Actually, sorry, before we do that, I want to look at the configuration of the entity browser. Um, one thing to note here is that when you go to the configuration screen, there is currently an entity browser item here, but that was added because we enabled the media entity browser module. So had we not enabled that, you would have had to come here and actually create uh, your first en entity browser uh, before you could reference, before you could use it. So I'm going to just show what the default one comes with uh, this module. So there's a few display plugin options. Uh, depending upon, there's some weirdness depending on, and we'll talk about it a little later, but in, for this, we're going to use modal. Um, basically, the two main ones are iframe and modal, so, and we'll, we'll see an example of both in, in action. Uh, there's also the widget selector plugins, which were the tabs that you saw in the interface uh, up at the top. Those can be different things, like currently they're, you know, they're anchor tags or, oh, actually, I'm not sure exactly what they are, but they're links. Um, there's options for like a, a drop down widget um, or some other options. So that depending on how you want that to look in the interface, you can alter, alter that. There are also the selection display plugins, which one of the one of the options is a multi step selection. So I'm trying to explain this before actually showing you, <laughs> but um, if you had multiple tabs, right, you can maintain the selection throughout if you use the multi-step uh, option. So if you had a Twitter tab and an Instagram tab, instead of having to add the Twitter, embed it, come back, do it again, go to Instagram or Twitter, I don't remember which one I said, um, you can do it all in one. So I can select a Twitter, change tabs, select an Instagram post. Um, so that that's probably an option that you, you want to take a look at. Um, okay, so I'm doing the modal. I'm going to remove these values so that I get a responsive version. Um, there was also a link text field there that lets you change the text of the button. So if you don't, if you don't like select entities because the client's going to be like, what? You know, you can make it images or whatever generic term that you know, you, you want to use. So there's a bunch of options in Entity Browser, so I recommend that you go in and see what, what's possible. Um, there's, some, there's some crazy stuff. Uh, but the most important part here is we're going to get to the widget section, and I can add new widget plugins. So in this case, uh, you can see here that there is a view display. So the Media Entity Browser module also creates a view for you that sets this all up. Uh, so that is selecting that specific display. 
Let's see if it works. Okay, it's not, so I'm going to skip that. All right, so let's go back and edit this. Select the entities. Oh, this screen is so small <laughs> with my security update happening. Um, so, so here it is, this is the interface. So this is pretty nice. I mean, based on what we've had in the past, um, it's sort of similar to the Drupal 7 contrib media module, uh, but yeah, so this is nice. Being able to see thumbnails of your media items and uh, allowing them to select those is pretty cool. So in this case, I can click here and it adds a nice little check checkbox and I can select that entity and it will display it right in the right in the node. Um, so that's cool, right? Right? Let's, I mean, yeah. Yeah, the, the media guys have been hard at work on this and um, they've done a really great job. So this it's exciting to be able to just stand up here and <laughs> talk about it and show the work that they've done. Um, so really cool. All right, I am going to, let's see. All right, we're not there yet. So we're going to extend it a little bit. We're going to make it a little bit more flexible, and we're going to upload. Uh, sorry, we're going to enable the drop zone JS module. Have you guys heard of that drop zone? Drop drop zone JS. It's a, a JavaScript library that allows you to plop some images right on top of it. So it's it's really neat. Um, and what it what it does is it, it includes an integration with Media and Core, um, so you can create a widget, uh, an entity browser widget plugin. I mean, <laughs> this stuff is crazy. I'm like, in, yeah, <laughs> there's so many terms. Um, but yeah, so it integrates with that library and we can use that as a, a tab, for example, uh, in the entity browser. So let's go and do that. So we're gonna edit our entity browser. We're going to skip to the widget section. And I don't know if you saw it before, but there's basically a bulleted list of items here that tell you what's available to be added as a plugin. So we're going to use the media entity drop zone JS with edit option. And that basically adds it to the bottom of the page here. I don't recommend that you use this default title. It's a little confusing. Uh, so we're going to just say upload images. Uh, and then we have to select a media type. So in this case, I want, I want to select media. I'm going to leave everything else here. Okay. So let's do this again. So we're going to go to select entities. And now you notice I have a second tab. So I only had view before, which showed me my media items. Now I have an upload images tab that I can click and I get this really slick uh, drop zone JS option. So I can click here to actually prompt the OS file selection, or I can just um, grab these and drop them right on top. Now, they actually got put below. Oh, that's something I forgot. That's all right. Um, actually, let me do that. So by default, uh, the form display for the image item has a few options that are on the field. Um, in this case, I actually want an auto-created title so that I don't have to do that every time. That's something that um, it allows you to do by just hiding the field on the form submission. So I'm gonna just remove the name. Now, obviously, if you want your clients to be able to name their media, by all means, leave that field. Uh, but in this case, I'm just gonna have it auto-generate it so I don't have to type the fields out. 
All right, so we're just going to hide those, and then we're going to do this again very quickly. That's a good question. I believe so, yes. Yeah. But don't take that as gospel. <laughs> Unless anybody else knows. Okay. We'll go with that then. <laughs> um, all right. So let's select the entities here. Upload images. Let's do it again. All right. So now basically all I have to do is enter the... Um, alt text for each one. Can't count. Okay, so there you go. So we've added all of these. There's one more change I want to make um, just so I can show you, um, which I should have done while I was in there. I'm going to alter the display, the managed display of this option because it's showing the original image, which is making it really large and difficult to view. So I'm going to bring this down to, let's just say a medium option, and I'm going to save it. Did I not? I didn't save the node, did I? Oh. See, you guys knew it. You didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Hey, you know what? That's perfect. I did that on purpose. Yeah. So that, you know, my media items are there. So, boom, I don't have to re-upload them. So let's, uh, let's go here and select them. All right. There you go. So when this displays on the node, they're going to go from left to right. So I can actually remove, I can rearrange these, drag and, drag and drop, depending on where I want to put them. Um, so that's kind of cool. And once they're saved, let's view the node. Boom. Absolutely. So back when you were on your node edit page. Yes. And you scroll down to the media section. So I see an edit button. If you edit, I'm assuming you can edit what the alt text. Would you can actually. It's the. Correct. Yes. Yep. It's, it's uh, I mean, think of it just like a node, you know, if that node is referenced anywhere, it, you know, you, you edit that node in one place and it, it updates it in every, everywhere. So yes, the, the answer is yes. But what's cool about this is once you do edit, it gives you a pop-up that gives you access to uh, all, of the, all of the fields, all of the metadata directly right here. Um, so in this case, I don't have any metadata, I'm just using the alt text, which is ironic since we were just talking about the media initiative, but we will get to that in a little bit. Um, Quick yeah, sure. Can you lock, you can edit that image? Hmm. Yeah, not, not in core, not in core, I don't think. Um, I'm sure there are some permissions that you can lock down there, um, but yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So you put those in the node, right? Yes. I don't, it will not remove it from the media library, I don't believe. Yeah, so if you, if you, if you add it, if you create a node and you add an image and you remove it from that node, it will stay in the media library. Okay. Yeah. No, no, oh sorry, that's what you're asking? No, no. No, now if you, if you went to the media tab in the content area and removed it, yes, it would remove it from everywhere. But if you just remove that, specific reference from a node, no, it will stay everywhere else. Cool. Yep. Questions? Yeah. Did you change the file size, sorry, did you change the display size of those images here? You also changed the display size on the library of that page. Is there a way to make these smaller so it makes the library still be large? Sure, yeah. It's just a different view mode. Like right now I'm using one view mode, the default view mode, but you could for sure have a separate one for full content or whatever that is. Um, render that on the page itself and then render the default or, you know, for the, for the smaller thumbnail. Yep. Any other questions? Okay. All right. <laughs> um, now I have to remember where I was. <laughs> Actually, I have a couple questions. 
Just hang tight. Just hang tight. It's coming. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so basically the next step is... All right, so what we've got, we've got multiple image upload. We've got drag and drop interface. We can reuse these images anywhere. Um, but they're going to be like, well, what about the WYSIWYG? I want to I wanna add my cat picture in the WYSIWYG. So there is, um, in order to do that, we use the entity embed module. Um, I believe I'm not part of the media initiative, so they, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I think eventually something like this is going to be ported into core um, so that we can embed entities. But this module is, it's amazing. If you guys don't have a favorite module, this will probably become one of them. Um, so it's a contrib module, basically, that allows you to embed any entity in the WYSIWYG in CK Editor. Uh, it has support for image styles and view modes. It's maintained by the Drupal Media team. Um, and it's currently the best solution for embedding entities in Drupal. That is not what I meant to hit. Um, <clears throat> So let's uh, let's check it out. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is what it does is it gives you an option to add a button to the WYSIWYG. So we're gonna go to this area, content authoring and text editor embed buttons, and we're gonna check this out. So we've got a couple embed buttons actually that are automatically created for us. So I'm gonna click edit here just to show you. Uh, so this button is going to reference the media type and it allows me to choose a media type. So I'm gonna choose image. And again, sorry, this, this example is also very specific to images and, and a few other things, but by all means, you could select multiple types here, do all kinds of stuff. Um, but just for simplicity's sake and trying to give an example, that, that's what I'm doing. Uh, we're gonna select the media entity browser here for this button. So that means when I click this button, which entity browser is gonna load? Because you can have multiple. I also recommend uploading an icon. I don't have an icon, so we're just going to save it. Um, but it's basically going to load as an E, which is really bad for the client. Um, so that's not recommended. Uh, then once we have our button, we need to actually enable it on the text format. So we'll jump in here to our text format. And we're going to take our E icon and drop it there. And we're going to just trash the other one. One thing to note here is that if you want to display the embedded entities, you need to check this box, which um, basically allows the data attributes to pass through. Um, and then let's see here. Yes. Let me configure that one more time. Just want to check something. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Fingers crossed. So we're going to edit this note again for the 12th hundred time. Yes, we have an E. So I'm going to throw in. Oh, wow. I can't even see it because it's so small. So we're going to click here, and I made a mistake. So this is where I wanted to talk about. There is a, there's currently a bug, I don't know if it's a bug, 
I maybe I shouldn't say it's a bug, but uh, basically there's a um, there's a problem where you cannot use Entity Embed with the modal version of an Entity Browser. So you have to go in and select and the iframe version and use that. So that's what we're gonna do. That's why I'm, I was getting an error. So let's go create one of these real quick. And I'm gonna just call this one embed eb. And yeah, this is kind of a pain because you have to add the widgets again, but maybe there's a different way around this that I'm not aware of. Um, so if anybody knows, let me know. But so we're gonna go through this process. And again, what this is basically doing is giving us access to the same uh, interface that we saw before to select the, the items to add to the node. So we've got that and we need to view. So we're gonna say. All right, so now what we need to do is alter that button that we just created to use our new entity browser. So here we go, now we have our new one. Um, and like I said, the only change we're really making in this case is switching the display plugin from modal to iframe because of the problem. All right. So now we're back at the node. And we're gonna go back to our E button. Oh, yes. All right, so now we've got our, mo I think it's because it's like inception, it's like modal inception. You have a modal inside of a modal that's in a modal and yeah. So in this case, it just loads an iframe in the modal, which is better, you know. Um, so I'm gonna select these two. Put them in, and it failed. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I messed that up. <laughs> that is so odd. Yeah, I said I can't select more than one. All right, well, for the sake of this, I'm going to select one and hope that it'll do it. All right. Um, all right, so this one, so this is cool. So I've selected the image and I'm gonna choose a thumbnail as a display. There's also the full content view mode, which you saw there, so I could display it like that. Um, but this gives me access to like the image style here and everything, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm gonna say here, and I can choose what to link it to. I'm not gonna link it to anything at this moment. Um, and I'm going to add a caption. And there we go. So let's save that. Take a look. Awesome. All right. So now we have the media item that's stored off in the database, and then we can pull that from anywhere. We can add it to the node, add it to a field, or we can embed it directly into the WYSIWYG. All right, let me show you another example. It's 100% width, but it dictates a height, so sort of. <laughs> But maybe that's an improvement that we can that we can make. Uh, yes, that's what I was doing. So I'm gonna show you guys another example. What time? What time is it? 12:42. All right, I think we're doing all right. Since you guys been asking questions during. Okay. 
So I enabled the media entity Twitter module and we're gonna create a new media type called Twitter. Oh, I can't type. And notice that I have to choose a source. This media source is actually the media entity Twitter module that I just enabled. That's actually the source that dictates how it's gonna store that information. Um, there's also some information here about whether to actually use Twitter, the Twitter API to fetch the data. Um, in this case, I don't wanna do anything special. I just wanna embed the direct tweet, but you, you could use the API to, to pull specific you know, options. Uh, there's also some field mapping here. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna touch that. All right, and then I'm gonna go in and adjust the display because it's gonna be a little messy by default. Again, I don't care about the name here. I just want the URL. All right, and that's odd. We're gonna go grab a tweet real quick. Where was I? Oh, I was in this one. All right. So we're gonna drop in this URL that tweet. All right, and we don't want any of this. We're managing the display of this tweet now. So I'm not gonna choose any of that. Remove the label, and then I'm gonna use the Twitter embed format. Save it. You can do it. You can do it. Come on, Wi-Fi. There we go. All right. So this actually, the media entity Twitter module, I believe, uses O-Embed. So what we were talking about before about incorporating it into core, it some of that technology is already in use just in the contrib space. So um, yeah, so this is basically that in action, but ideally, we won't need a contrib module to do that. Eventually, we'll just be able to put in the URL and it'll pull in that, that remote source and embed it. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna do one thing here. Uh... No, that's not what I So we're gonna check, we're going to, we went to our entity reference field, which was on our basic page content type, and we're gonna enable the new uh, reference type to, to pull the Twitter in. Which basically gives entity browser access to be able to post embed Twitters. Twitter, Twitters, tweets. <laughs> so we'll jump back to our node and edit this. Right below my son. Okay. 
let's delete my son. <laughs> and select. Is there a way to skip that first step? Which step? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, there's a checkbox that says auto open it. I believe so. When you when you do that, it will it will automatically open. So we can actually pull in the Twitter here, and we could have again view modes. So if there was metadata attached to it, you could add something to the top or the bottom and and display it here. So boom, we got Twitter. We have a tweet right in our WYSIWYG. That's pretty cool. So we're going to save. And check it out. And you, you can see that it loads with like some odd block quote styling. I think that's from Drupal, I guess. Um, it must like put it in a block quote, and it waits for the JavaScript to replace it. So um, there's ways around that, I'm sure. OK. So that's pretty sweet. Um, I don't even, let's see where I'm at. So let's do some cropping. Yeah, sure. Yes, they, they, they basically get default, default view modes just from an entity. So if you want to add those, yeah, you can go in and, and create more view modes for that, but they get kind of some default Drupal view modes right out of the box. Yep. I don't think I'm going to have time to go over all of this. So <laughs> would you rather talk about image cropping or organizing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, show of hands, image cropping. OK, it makes it easy. All right. Uh, but I can talk about image cropping very quickly. Um, I'll pull it up on my slide. Um, so there's a module called the Crop API, which is kind of the core API that other modules use to crop things. Uh, and there's an image, uh, a module called the Image Widget Crop, which uses uh, a JavaScript library called Cropper.js. Um, and basically when they upload the image directly when they upload the image and you get the entity preview they can crop it and there are some options like soft limits and hard limits so they um, you have like you can force them to have a certain size or ha you know things like that there's also the focal point module which I've been to like five or six sessions here and I feel like everyone has talked about the focal point module. So you probably know what it's about, but it uh, allows you to like click in the focal point of the area and it crops from that focal point instead of cropping um, you know, from the center. So it, it really depends on how much flexibility you want to give them. If, if, if it's really just important to have one area that's always visible, then go with focal point. But if you want more control, like you can you know, drag the little handles and stuff, that's more of the image widget crop. Okay, let's do some organizing. So yeah, this, this happens all the time. Like I wanna be able to organize my photos like Dropbox. Can you just create Dropbox for me? Yeah, sure. Um, so let me show you, show you an example of that. Basically it's gonna use taxonomy. That's, the, that's really the gist of it. Um, just like you would create a node and you would tag it with taxonomy term you're going to do the same thing, except you're going to do it with media types. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to just use image as an example. Um, and I need to create the taxonomy term. I had this recently with a personal project of mine where uh, they had a set of options that they wanted to 
uh, like stock images. So they wanted that kind of separate from the library itself, or not necessarily separate, but at least a place where they could go specifically to look at the stock images that they have uploaded. So I'm going to use that as an example. All right, I'm just going to use one for time's sake. So once we've added that, oh, come on. we need to add the field to our content type. I'm sorry, why am I adding it to the content type? <laughs> oh, geez. All right, we're going to add it to the media type. We're going to add a taxonomy reference to the category. I'm going to just leave it at one for now. And we're going to say that it can reference our category vocabulary. And then I'm going to click around aimlessly. And I'm going to choose a category, which was stock images. And again, you can, you can alter this widget here. It doesn't have to be autocomplete. It can be a select list, whatever. OK, so now we have our taxonomy term, and a media item is tagged with that term. So we can go to our entity browser. Jump over to the widget section, and we're going to add a new one. I'm sorry, I did this backwards. We're going to need to alter. OK, so the entity browser, each widget entity browser plugin uses a view. So we need to basically alter that view to filter out the content. Uh, so we're going to edit this. And I'm just going to duplicate the display. OK. Um, and then I'm going to add a filter. And I'm going to have to add a reference. Okay, so did you guys see what I did there? Just basically selecting the, doing a reference so I could get access to it and then grabbing the taxonomy and selecting this is the one I want to filter out. Um, I did this wrong technically because it's going, I didn't, it's going to add this to the other entity browser display, view display, but that's all right because it's the last thing I'm doing. So <laughs> I'm just going to go. Okay, so then we jump back to our entity browser here and now we can go to the display and um, we're going to add another view option oh, I already did and then we're going to select a view oh. anybody want to guess <laughs> all right let's go for uh, stock images All right. Now keep in mind, I only added this to one entity browser, so this would not be available in the embed entity browser. I'd have to go and do this process again. So I'm going to go down to my media field because that's the, that's the one that's using the other one. So there we go. I have a stock images.
So as you can see, the, the really powerful thing about Entity Browser is that you can basically use views to update it, change it, show the content that you want, filter out the content that you want. Anything that you can do in views is pretty much possible. So. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like in this case, I use it as an example to kind of show a prominent tab up at the top, but you could by all means add an exposed filter directly to the initial display and they could just toggle those. That That's fine as well. All right. Happy dance. <laughs> All right, so don't forget the sprints on Friday. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen the slide and every, everything, so check them out. Um, and then let, it, let me know what you thought. This was my first time speaking at anywhere, so uh, I appreciate your, your patience and everything, so it's been good. Um, but thank you all. And if there are any other questions that weren't asked, you can come up. Uh, hi, I have a question. Um, have you come across any of the contributed modules or even media that would allow you to upload files beyond the PHP limit and also the number of files that can be uploaded because of the PHP configuration? Mm, that is, that's a good question. Okay. That I do not have an answer to. Yeah. Uh, I also found your uh, uh, way of using views and taxonomy to be quite interesting. And in, in that respect, one could potentially use the Media Embed browser plugin to just use the image and not necessarily use media at all to kind of get similarish functionality. No, because the media module is actually how those items are stored. So I don't think you'd be able to use, now you could use Entity Browser to do selection of other entities. Right. Like that would be, that would be fine. I mean, I guess technically if you were to add. Image and you're done. Right, I mean, it's possible. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. possible. Um, but that being said, media, the media items specifically, the media types. Of course, yeah. Are tied to source plugins. Right. Which pull that data in and, and show how to, right, I understand. you know, to, to map that data so that you wouldn't have, or you would have to create something else to do that. Yeah. Now, other question which I have is a final one, uh, is um, have you, uh, so it seems like whenever you are using any of this ecosystem, you are essentially going into a God mode and you have access to everything. And so, I partially know the answer that the access control for references doesn't really work in core, but have you come across something like that? Because you don't want to expose this entire library of your images files to anybody who has embed yeah. capability, so. Well, um, I, I would probably say that, um, you know, it's an entity. So if the, if the person, if the role has access to the entity, then they would just they would have access. Otherwise, you, you need to lock it down. So I, I think at that level is probably where it stops, and then you would have to maybe look contrib for more permissions. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Workben workbench access was recommended. Can you uh, post a link to the slides on the, uh, the page for this? Oh, yes. Yes. Like on the whatever, you know, schedule page. Like, can you add it to that so we could just? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Schedule page, yeah. Yeah. And do the slides have the list of the actual modules you use to make this happen? Yes. It does, cool. Because yeah. like, there's all like different versions, like dev this, three, and all yeah. the like, which yeah. one to use, which one not to use. Okay, like, I'll, I'll update it. I have a list, but it doesn't list out the actual branches, but I, 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 can, I can update that to show which versions. Cool, that'd be awesome, man. Yeah, Thank you. absolutely. Hey, thanks. Uh, it was a good talk. Um, really quick on like Composer to like install all this stuff. Uh, I ran into some weird is issues with like drop zone and stuff like that. Like, in, oh, your media browser is newer and you're trying to use an older drop zone. And yes. Like, you have any recommendations on keeping all that straight? <sighs> That's kind of related to what he was saying is where I, I ran into the same thing. If you just try to install this all with Composer, 
it doesn't know yeah. that that you're using the media enter, media entity contrib module versus you know the media and core. So you have to kind of I don't know how else to do it other than just to create a list of items with specific branches because yeah. most of the providers have created a second branch for uh, for the media in core. So I literally just have like a list and then I'll run all of them uh -huh. okay. in Composer. Unfortunately, like that's, I can't think of any other way because um, otherwise it'll select like the one next version yeah. in Composer. Yeah. yeah. And then you'll run into a bunch of stuff yeah, <laughs> like, oh, it's not compatible. And uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, man. Um, hi. Um, so when you try to upload the image through the WYSIWYG, is there a way that you can display those um, fields that you have actually in the media, add media form? So when you actually add a media entity through the, uh, media, entity through the media entity like page, you will have a media name, like file and description, yeah. but when you actually upload through the WYSIWYG, there is no way that you can Provide those fields. It can display those fields. The, the only thing is we're only displaying the teaser. But it's a view, so you could display the entire. So is this just the, just the um, display mode that you'd have to drag and exactly. drop? Exactly, exactly. Like the image gets output with the display mode. If you wanted to change that to include the other fields that you've added, you could do that, and, and that would show right in the entity browser. Sorry, if you have any more questions, okay. we can just move it out in the hall okay. because we yep. have another session coming. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Very much appreciate your talk. Thanks. What options are you aware of in terms of being able to embed media files? I have run into that before. Um, there's a there's a popular module called Linkit. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but um, I, like I ran into a problem where I wanted to link to oh, was it Linkit or anyway the same kind of situation where I, I actually wanted to reference the file itself and not the in, the the media entity. Um, I, I don't know. Okay. That's a, I, I think it depends on the situation, like where how you're where you're trying to put it. Um, gotcha. Hmm. I don't know. That's a good question, and that and and you can probably check that out on the entity embed project page. See if there's any information about that. As far as I know, there's no way to do that. But um, yeah. There may be. Yeah. We should be able to see them both, hence we have all the plugged in. Oh, that's good. It's going to be great.